I share, I want to start off with a little story. There was a little old lady who, who would come out of every morning onto the steps of her front porch and raise her arms to the sky and shout, Praise the Lord! Well, one day an atheist moved into the house next to her. Over time, he became irritated at the little old lady. So every morning he would step out onto his front porch and yell after her, There is no God! Time passes with the two of them carrying on this way every day. Then one morning in the middle of winter, the old lady stepped onto her front porch and shouted, Praise the Lord! Lord, I have no food and I am hungry. Please provide for me, O Lord. The next morning she stepped onto her porch and there were two huge bags of groceries sitting there. Praise God. Praise the Lord, she cried out. He has provided groceries for me. The atheist jumped out from behind the hedges and shouted, Ha! There is no Lord. I bought those groceries. The little old lady threw her arms into the air and shouted, Praise the Lord. He has provided with groceries and he made the devil pay for them. So, the, say after me, the devil is going to pay. Say it, the devil is going to pay. The Bible says that the Lord will restore everything the years a locust have stolen from you. So if your wife is sitting next to you, give her a nice hug. If she's not sitting next to you, don't hug someone else's wife. I want to tell you this morning, the best years of your life is ahead of you. It doesn't matter where you are now, but what matters is where you're going and what God has planned for you. But everything in our lives is dependent on the perspective. Two people can walk into the church, one can walk away, not ever wanting to be in a church, and the other person's life can be changed forever. Everything in life is perspective. The way you look at it and your attitude is everything, like that old lady. When life hands you lemons, you have a choice, but you've got to make lemonade. It's not how you start, but how you finish. Like many in here, I've wondered about life many times. What is the meaning of life? The thing that we are busy with right now. Some say it is a puzzle. Others say it's a test. What do you say? Some say it's a roller coaster. Some say it's a painting. But life is a gift. It is a gift that is given to all of us every morning, the moment you wake up. It's a gift and what you make of it. But many are chasing something. Some are chasing success. Others are only chasing their next meal. But those that are chasing success, when they reach the top of the mountain, and when you ever reach the top of the mountain, how are you going to feel? Are you going to feel big or are you going to feel small? Because there's always going to be another mountain. But the purpose of life is this, and this is the title of my message this morning, is... I must be about my father's business. That is the purpose of your life, is that we must be about our father's business. Whatever we do, we are busy with his business all the time. So say after me, I must be about my father's business. Luke 2.42 says the following, And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. And when they had finished the days as they returned, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother did not know it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, they went a day's journey and sought him among their relatives and acquaintances. So when they did not find them, they returned to Jerusalem. Can you believe your parents forget about you somewhere? They leave you in the mall, yeah, in uh, Uppington. Now it was after three days they they, they returned. And found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And so when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. And he said to them, why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? But they did not understand the statement which he spoke to them. And sometimes people will ask you, why are you doing this? And why have you done this to us? But they will not understand that when you are busy with your father's business, that you are doing something that way beyond they can understand. Jesus' parents looked looked at him in the flesh, but he knew why he was on the earth and what he was supposed to do. Even as a 12-year-old, things will not make sense when you're about your father's business. Some people will have other plans for your life, but God says, I know the plans that I have for you. 
He says, I knew, I know why I created you before you were in your mother's womb. I knew you. You might look a certain way in the flesh, but God knows you. And He knows exactly why He made you. And the reason He brought you to the earth. And you have to be about your father's business. That is your calling upon the earth. What is your father's business? For us to understand this, today I'm going to speak about five questions that every human has to answer. Every human. The first question is, who am I? Who am I? This is a question that deals with your identity. The average human being has never answered the question, who am I? This is not what you do or did. Most people don't know who they are, so they die as somebody else. We have that today. It's a tragedy what social media does to people. It makes you feel about, bad about yourself. It makes you want to be somebody else. And people spend their whole lives on it, not discovering who they are. And you have to understand who you are. You have a name and a surname. You were brought up in a certain house. You, were, you have parents that born you into the earth. But you are a spirit that God sent to the earth through a certain family. You are a spirit. It doesn't matter where you are born into. But God knows why He brought you. So some of you were there on Wednesday night. I was born in Pretoria. I've got two older sisters, so I'm the youngest. Who is the youngest? So we were spoiled, okay? So just mark them. They're all spoiled people. You become the biggest givers, okay? So my father was a big influence in my life. My mother was uh, nine years younger than him. My father also played for the Bulls. He was a Springbok athlete. And they were in the ministry, Christian ministry. My grandfather was in the ministry. He was a missionary. After getting his degree, he burned his trophies because he received the call of God and he became a missionary starting black churches back in the day Zimbabwe all around Africa could preach in Zulu flat out him and my grandmother so we were brought up in this house where uh, we worshiped God and we read the word and we prayed we prayed because that's what we did when we have a family family gathering after meals we praying we worshiping it's great but don't let it become a religion it's no, it does, it's no good I'm praying and worshipping the whole day, but I cannot love my wife or I love my kids. My kid don't, doesn't have a relationship with me, but I'm in the church every week. Where's my Christianity? You're a hypocrite. So, like anything in life, if you don't take care of it, the enemy will steal. My parents, they went through things in their marriage for seven, eight years in the house. It was hectic trauma all of a sudden we came from this house of being in god's blessing to a place of absolute trauma my parents divorced when i was 15 and uh, i went to live with my mother so every year we moved to another house in my high school career didn't have a lot of money i wasn't living for god wasn't born again never went to church i only prayed when i was drunk and when i went to bed and when i prayed for my food so i never had a purpose but there was a lot of seed in my heart sown from a young age. And that's what I want to say. God says that His word will not return to Him void. And I want to say to you this morning, if your child is rebelling, you better stop, not stop praying for him. Because your children is going to come in. God will be true to His word. And we have to take authority and pray them back. So I had no focus and no vision. I only wanted to be like every young person trying to be cool, be famous. And then I got a break. Got contracted as a young player at the Bulls. Then I got injured. Then I went into a depression. And at this low point of my life, at 19 years old, my father passed away. Three years after his divorce. And that's what I want to say to you this morning. Well, you, better, you better think twice about divorce. Because it's not God's plan. God can restore anything. The effect it has on your life, you will never understand it. And I only understand it now, the effect, now that I'm a parent myself and with my own kids. God can heal anything. God can restore anything. God can make anything that's dead come alive. And I want to say to you this morning, you better not give up because God has not given up on you. 
So my father passed away, and then I went into this place of depression. I never understood, and I started thinking about life more. Why are we doing what we're doing? But you might not know who you are now, but God knows exactly who you are and why He created you and where He's planning to take you. That's the most important thing. You might not see the full picture, but God knows the beginning from the end. God is going to raise you up and He's going to use you. Shout Amen if you believe that. God can raise you up to shake this city and God can raise you up to shake this nation. God can raise you up just to save your family. You don't have to become Ronald Bonker. Just become a father to your children. Just become a mother to your children. Husbands, love your wives. Wives, submit to your husband. Love your husband. That's the, probably the most godly thing you can do. The second thing I want to say is, where am I from? First thing, who am I? Second thing is, where am I from? This is not an ethnic question. It's not about whether you come from Africa, USA, China, or Kenya, Pretoria, Uppington, or Achenais. No, it is where you are from regards to your creation. If you know where you came from, you can also find out your ability, your strength, and your potential. Every article of design, like a cell phone, has been designed by somebody that thought it out carefully. And God thought you out carefully. Everything of an article of design comes with an instruction manual. The Bible is your instruction manual. God thought carefully about you. He gave you an instruction manual like he told Joshua, let this book not depart from you, but meditate on it day and night. We meditate upon our social media day and night and the comments of people left, right and center. And God said, meditate upon my word and you will know exactly who you are, why I made you. You will not struggle. You will not have hurts or pains. But we are where we are because we neglect the word of God and we replace it with somebody else and with something else and we worship something else where the Bible says worship the Lord alone worship Him and worship Him alone we are all on our journey you're not going to be perfect okay, from day one but we are on a journey of sanctification so God is making you better better, better from glory to glory that's how God does it He, he takes you like this doesn't mean we don't face setbacks we face setbacks every single day challenges every single day but we are all the same we are black white and pink and yellow on the outside but if you cut us all of us bleed red we have the same father coming from heaven i am not an afrikaner like you are an englishman or whatever i'm a son of god that is who you are stop being proud of your culture but be proud that you belong to the lord jesus christ and that your name is written in the lamb's book of life let the joy of the Lord be your strength. That is what everything is about. You have a loving father. You might be an orphan here, but you have a loving father. You might be neglected and abused here, but you have a loving father. I tell you that. There's no love like his love. And I want to encourage you, make it your priority to understand his love. Make it your priority to understand who you are in him. Make it your priority of your life. When I'm praying, I'm saying, Lord, just give me your heart. Understand, help me understand the love that you have for me. Because if I understand that love, I can love others the way you love me. Hurt people hurt people. When you are hurt, you hurt other people. When the love of God is in your heart, the, the word of God comes out of your mouth. Life comes out of your mouth. You don't... You're not scared to bless people. You're not scared to celebrate people because you know exactly who you are. You're not insecure. You don't need money to become secure. You need to know who you are in Christ. God says in Psalm 139, He says, How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. And when I wake, I am still with you. A lot of you should have been born dead, but you're here this morning by God's divine appointment listening to my voice. Maybe you should have been blind or deaf. You should have been bankrupt, but you're alive. So God still has a plan for you. God still wants to raise you up because that's what God does. He's a God of a second chance. A third chance, fourth chance, fifth chance. How many chances? God will always be there to give you an open hand to restore you. God says, restore. I will restore. What you carry is what the enemy is after. 
When Jesus was born, Herod wanted to kill all the babies. When Moses was born, Pharaoh killed all the babies. What's happening in our lives now? They're killing all the babies through abortion. But now, what is the, the enemy after in you? He's trying to kill you because that's what the Bible says in John 10 verse 10. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Why? Because of the seed that you carry. You carry the seed of God within you. You carry the seed of greatness. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you because God has anointed you. He has anointed you to preach the gospel. He has anointed you to heal the brokenhearted. But you won't understand it while you're busy on Facebook the whole day. You'll never understand it. Never. God will never write you off. You will rise again and you will preach about the goodness of God. You will lead people to Christ. You will bless people. You're still going to give your greatest offering. You're still going to build a church. You're still going to help families. You're going to still feed people. All of these things are still because it's in you. God has placed those things within you. Do not give up because God depends on you to be His hands and His feet. Why? Because you must be about our Father's business. That is why. The third thing is, why am I here? This is a question of progress. Why do you exist and what did you come to earth to do? Did you just come to go to work and pay bills and die? As many people think, it has to be more than that. There has to be a purpose for your existence. In my life, there was a period where I had no purpose. I, was, I had talent, but I had no purpose. Like a lot of people, they can have success, but they don't have purpose. You can have money, but you don't have purpose. There's a statistic that shows that there's no correlation between wealth and happiness. People think when I have money, I will be happy. No, it's not that way. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord. Knowing that my name is written in the Lamb's book of God. Knowing that Jesus is the only thing that I adore. Is your joy and your strength in your life. Why are you here today? Maybe somebody invited you. But why are we here? You are here for your father's business. When I was 20 years old, I gave my life to Christ in a school hall like this. And then my, I received purpose for my life. Everything I did became for my father's business. Like I say, you're not perfect, but at least we are, we've made up our minds. A lot of people have not made up their minds and they're drifting. Like a, like a boat on the sea, being tossed to and fro. And after I became born again, everything changed. And now that's what God will do with you. Everything will change in your life. The moment you commit 100% in your life towards Him. God, God said, ask me. I'll give you the nations for your inheritance. Whatever you ask in prayer, what God says. If you believe it, it will be given to you. You might sit here not knowing what your purpose is or what you want to do, but I'll tell you what your purpose is to do. Matthew 6.33 says, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. It says, Psalms 37 verse 4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. But Lord, you don't understand. I need a husband. I need a wife. I need a job. Well, delight yourself in the Lord, and the Lord will give you the desires of your heart. All you need to do is, is to seek Him and to seek His face. Matthew 28.19 the Bible says that go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, baptizing them, teaching them my commandments. This is what the Father's business is about. This is the heart of the church, the Great Commission. Jesus said, go into all the world. He didn't say gather. He said, go, run for me. Run, run, run. Luke 4, 18, the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord is upon you because He has anointed you already. You're waiting for God. God is waiting for you. God has already anointed you to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent you to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And like I'm doing this morning, I proclaim and declare that Uppington will never be the same this morning by the Spirit of God. Some of you are sitting, but you're going to become runners. You are sitting, but you're going to become runners. 
things that are dead in your heart is going to become alive this morning by the Spirit of God. Nothing else by the Spirit of God is waking things up and the shackles upon you will be broken off and the shades upon your eyes shall fall off and the hardness of your heart shall be broken off because God will give you a heart of flesh instead of a heart of stone. Shout amen if you believe it. Hallelujah. We are here to make him famous. When we get to heaven, we're all going to look back and say, I wish I did more, Lord. But I was stuck. I'm stuck in my earthly thinking. The Bible says, renew your mind. Renew it. The blessing of the Lord, Proverbs 10, 22 says, makes a person rich and he adds no sorrow to it. That is what comes upon you when God is upon you. He blesses every area of your life. You might not have as much money as you want, but you've got a happy marriage. Your children adores you. Your work is blessed. People adore you. They respect you. Why? Because the blessing of the Lord is upon you. And he adds no sorrow to it. It's not about the money or the fame or the recognition. But if God's hand is upon you, he will make a way where there's no way. He will open up a door for you where everything is shut. God will send someone from another town to come pick you up here to take you to the promised land. Proverbs 12, 26 says, the righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. This is who we are. God's design for you is to be better than the world. Not arrogantly, because we are submitted to him and his word. We live for him. But God's design for us is to be the best. Because we hail from him. Tell me, what about God is average? There's nothing average about him. There's nothing average about you. There's nothing mediocre. Everything about God is powerful. It's excellent. This is who we are. This is who you are. God made you that. Joseph was in the prison and God elevated him to a palace. He had the dream, but he had to go through the prison into the palace. All of us have to go through our desert. We have to walk through it because God has to purify you. He has to get rid of all the earthly stinking thinking. God has to get all the flesh out of you so His Spirit can flow through you. So you become a river of living water. And you don't become a, a swell and a, a dam that's just stinking and a reservoir. But God wants to make you a river. And He wants to make you a blessing. So you become a blessing to others. And not keep the blessing for yourself. That's God's plan for you. God doesn't mind to bless you. But He doesn't want the blessing to have you. God will give you the desires of your heart. I laugh. People want us to pray for them. And now I want the McLaren. I want the BMW. I want the... And I'm like, okay, God doesn't mind to give you these things. <laughs> he really doesn't. But what are you giving God? No, but I don't have money. Okay, how much are you earning? Give God what you can. If you can't trust God with the little that you have, how can God will ever entrust you with anything more? If you cannot give God with a little... God will never give you much. You can fight that until Jesus comes back. It will never change. God is testing our hearts. Because you cannot serve mammon or God. You have to make a decision who is your provider. You are not working for your boss. You are working for Jesus. That's why I say, and it's the only place in the Bible, in Malachi 3, where he says, test me in this. If you've not become a giver, I am challenging you this morning to start to give to God. And trust, trust Him and see how He opens up the doors for you. Miraculously. Opportunity, increase. Because He says, ask me, test me, that I will fill your bonds. And I will open up the heavens, is what the, the Bible says. If you earn a hundred rand, give God what you can. It's not about the amount, it's about the heart and the obedience. And then the Bible also says, command those who are rich, not to put their hope in riches. It says in Deuteronomy 8, it says, The Lord gave you the power to create wealth. If you have money, you have a greater responsibility to make a difference in society and in the kingdom of God. Time is flying. Number four, quickly, what can I do? What is my true ability? They say the average human only uses 10% of their brains. Most of us use less. No one knows your ability except your maker. So never let anyone judge you based on their measurements or their tastes. But like anything, God has placed the potential in you, but you have to develop the potential. 
you have to increase your capacity. God has placed it there, but that's not going to develop on its own. You have to nurture it. You have to study. You have to work. You have to work on your body as you work on your spirit. You have to work on your intellect. Reading, continually growing. If you don't grow in capacity, God cannot bless you. Do you guys understand? That's why the Bible says enlarge the place of your tent. Enlarge the place of your mind, your heart, your spirit. If you aren't God, then you have to press in more. Press in more into prayer. Study the word. But we are body, soul, and spirit. Take care of your body. Take care of your mind as you take care of your spirit. God gave you talents, and these talents are to be used for your father's business. Whether you play sport or you're a student or you're a scholar, whatever you do when you're a musician or businessman, whatever you do, it's for God's glory. It's for your father's business. If you're a businessman and a boss, by the way you treat the people that work for you, you bring glory to God. By the way you channel your finances to further the kingdom of God is how you do your way for, for, for our father's business. But all of us are part of the body. Some are the pinky, some are the thumb, some are the foot, some are the, the femur, others are the arms, and Jesus is the head. Because he said he is the head of the church, and we all form a vitally important part of the body. And when we come to the church, we leave our egos at the door because we come in, we are the children of God. I don't care if you're a CEO, or if you're a springbok, or if you're a salesman, or if you're a scholar. When we come into the house of God, we are all just children. We are all just children of the Lord. Oh, I lay down my ego because I lift up the name of Jesus. Because when I lift up His name, every problem becomes small. Every issue disappears. We are children of the King. Leave your ego at the door. But let it die of you. The fifth thing quickly I want to finish off is where are we going and where are you going? This is a question of your destiny. No one was just born to die. We were born to fulfill an assignment. And what you are looking for is right where you are all the time. It's here in Uppington. If you cannot be faithful here, how will God take you anywhere else? You don't have to go to the US or the UK to be great. You can be great where you are. I had many plans for my life. I never intended to stand here this morning, but I thank God daily for His grace and His mercy because I know this is what God's plan is for my life. But what is God's plan for your life? God has called all of you for many great things. Many of you are running. Many of you are resisting. Many of you are rebelling. We have to humble ourselves. You know that the Bible says that God will forgive all sins, but God cannot forgive pride because you have to lay down the pride so God can heal you. God says that in the Bible He resists the proud and He gives grace to the humble. And then He says, humble yourself before the Lord that He might lift you up. That's when you give your life to Christ. You are humbling yourself so that God can have His way. The Bible says, Isaiah 55 verse 8, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. But God is not a man that he should lie. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He knows why he has placed you here. His thoughts for you are good. And you can trust him. You can trust his word. All you have to do is just to seek him and to commit to him fully. Get both your feet in the church. Serve in the church. I became an usher while I was a springbok. Some people can't even play for their first team at school. And now they don't want to serve. Whatever is in your heart, do it for the Lord, not unto man. Do it for the Lord, not unto man. That's why I say, there has to become a, a, a division between you and your finances also, because everything belongs to Him. Otherwise, your finances will control you. Jesus spoke more on finances than He spoke about heaven and hell, because He knew the power it has. I'm asking you this morning and challenging you to let God release that upon you, and let him bless you. Some of you, God called you to be an eagle, a lion, and you're not there. You know you're not there, but God's going to take you there. He's going to lift you up, and God's love is looking for you. 
the story of the prodigal son in the Bible. He was running away. He asked his father for his inheritance, took everything that he had because his father loved him so much that he gave it to him. He squandered everything in sinful living. He's sitting in a pig style, remembering his father's house and that his servants eat better than him. He decides and he came to his senses and said, I will go back to my father's house. On his way back, his father saw him and his father ran to him like God is running to you. God is seeking you out. Adam was, after Adam sinned in the, in the Garden of Eden, God came looking for him to restore relationship with him like God is looking for you this morning. God wants to restore relationship with you. God wants to restore destiny with you. Paul was first saw a man that persecuted the church. He killed Christians. He threw them in jail. And he bumped into Jesus like many of you are going to bump into Jesus this morning. And to, Jesus took him from being a Saul. And he made him a Paul. God's, God's going to change you. He's going to change you. It's going to be the greatest ride of your life. Believe me. God uses Paul after he saved him to write two-thirds of the testament. What can God do through your life? You might be a murderer sitting there in jail. doesn't matter. You might have screwed up in your marriage. It doesn't matter. God can restore you. You might have been abused. God can restore you. Moses was a murderer. He ran away from God. He couldn't even speak well. God raises him up to lead two million Israelites. What can God do through you? Never say, Lord, I'm not, I'm not able. Because God will use you. Simon Peter denied Jesus three times. He was Simon and Jesus said, I'll make you Peter. I'll make you rock. And upon that revelation, Jesus built a church. He was the leader of the disciples after denying Jesus. And then he was the first man to preach. And 3,000 people became born again in one session. What can God do through your life? Your failure is not final with God this morning. Your story is being written and it's God set up for your comeback in the name of Jesus. And many of you are coming back this morning. And I ask you to close your eyes right now because I want to pray for you. For many of you, this is your moment as you've listened to me. By the Spirit of God, I'm calling you. Many of you, maybe you've never even given your life to Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Maybe you've never given your life to Jesus, but this is your day. Like I sat there in, this mo in the morning with the drunkenness still in me. I sat in church and I knew that that morning was my morning, like many of you are sitting. So I want to ask you this morning, if you've never given your life to Jesus, that's the first person I want to pray to. The second person I want to pray for is, maybe you've known God, maybe you've gone to church your whole life, but maybe you've grown cold. You've maybe become mediocre. The Bible says that I wish that you were hot or cold, but now because you are lukewarm, I'm spewing you out. God wants you to be set ablaze. He wants you to be on fire. He wants you to be different so you can change the world. That's the second person I want to pray for. So I want to ask you this morning, if you fall into any two of those categories, you've never given your life to Jesus, I want you to raise your hand right now. And secondly, if you've grown called, I want you to raise your hand in Jesus' name right now. While every head is bowed, every eye is closed, believers praying, this is what we do. This is why we have church. You're not going to walk out here the same way in the name of Jesus. Raise those hands. I see them. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I don't care how old you are, how young you are. Jesus loves you and he wants to raise you up. He wants to raise you up. He wants to restore you. God bless you. God bless you.